Magnus Carlsen arrives to his game but seems like he's a bit late walks quickly to the playing hall this is at the global chess league he's taking on Levon Aronian and he's passing through the fan zone walking pretty quickly generally all the teams arrive together but Magnus is a bit late Levon goes to grab a bottle of water he's waiting for his opponent to arrive and there you have it with lot of applause Magnus Carlsen enters the tournament hall the games have not yet begin so Magnus is on time he takes his bottle and a handshake takes his chair for the SG Alpine Warriors the the SG Alpine Warriors take on the Triveni Continental Kings and it's going to be a very very tight encounter the game starts and levon opens with 1d4 magnus responds with knight f6 c4 and g6 this is interesting will he choose the kings indian will he go for the grunfeld we'll see the fianchetto system with g3 and magnus goes for b6 the double fianchetto which is not very common but levon does not even stop it seems like he's well prepared for this shot castles and now the knight comes out to c3 there's also another way to play here which is d5 but he prefers to go knight c3 which is relatively the simpler way to play takes and black has pretty decent score here uh, bishop e3 d6 the idea now is to go queen d2 and connect your rooks that's what he does later on you can put your bishop on h6 and so after knight d7 levon does go bishop h6 magnus sort of cleans the board there and he puts his knight on f6 <clears throat> the rooks are centralized rook f to d1 and magnus plays a very interesting move c5 now notice if you push your pawn to d5 there is this very strong move b5 weakening the d5 pawn that's why levon keeps it simple brings his rook magnus brings out his queen now solidifies his structure and now finally i think it's time first he takes on g7 king takes and pushes his pawn to d5 the bishop is kind of closed here but for magnus it's time to create counter play great move bishop h3 played and now the main idea is that you go knight g5 and trap this bishop takes on c4 takes on c4 and now he takes on f3 because anyway knight g5 was coming up and the rook takes the open file the white rook attacks the e7 pawn magnus defends it and g4 levon is on the offensive magnus is under some pressure because there is pressure on e7 and also now g5 comes in levon is playing very directly bishop g4 attacking the knight and now you can start attacking with h4 h5 or f4 f5 he plays his pawn up to f4 magnus tries to create some play on the queen side king comes up and he enters via b2 but levon's rook says let's trade for the time being it seems like black is under huge pressure because if you think about it f5 is coming e7 is weak h4 h5 is coming there's a lot that is happening here and after quite some thought magnus plays his queen to b7 he wants to enter there levon rushes a bit he should have gone rook e3 but he goes f5 and he misses this move perhaps queen d7 pinning the bishop there h4 and now magnus looks at the other other boards in order to see if he should play for a win or a draw he takes here and after mass trades he knows that the best he can achieve here is a draw rook comes in but is draw a given here is levon going to press because for the time being both sides are chopping off pawns but in the end it seems like white's pawns are going to be much more dangerous there is a passed pawn on the d file and there's also a passer on the a file there he gives a check king comes up and he starts pushing his pawn there not so easy because there's also an a pawn but magnus says i also have my passed pawn so he pushes it 
both sides pushing their pawns rook comes up and d7 played well now with the a pawn running down it might be very dangerous but magnus pushes his own pawn c3 and now next he goes c2 in order to stop it levon has to give up his d pawn but here if you see levon can play rook a2 and put his rook behind the passed pawn but he actually goes rook c5 which is also fine and white seems to have at least some edge here with this extra outside pawn although the number of pawns are the same white's pawns are much better check king up and he puts the rook behind the pawn in comes a check and the pawn rushes forward now the main thing is that at some point levon has to give up his f4 pawn if he wants to make progress for the time being he stays there magnus gives a check he goes back rook comes back waits check again is this going to be a draw because they are repeating the idea here but i think now levon's going to take some risk yes he moves his king to the other side and now after rook takes pawn which magnus must do otherwise he is losing levon comes back with his rook you can't trade rooks and go into the pawn end game because the, the pawn would queen but he gives a check king moves up and the rook goes behind the pawn but the king moves forward wow this is getting really intense the rook now blocks here check king comes up another check very important move there to give that check by magnus carlsen he finds that check king moves to b6 check here the king comes up is this losing or winning for white is white winning this because there are too many things to take care of king takes and now black has three pawns there while levon's king move, moves forward what does magnus do does he chop off the pawn well he moves his rook away and now levon can make a queen but then it would be a rook against three pawns and that could be quite risky for white as well so levon goes rook c4 he wants to play his rook to c8 magnus pushes his pawn rook moves in the check here rook has to come back check again and he goes rook e8 and now a8 queen is a risky decision for levon so he decides to repeat and magnus there dodges a bullet he manages to save himself levon tells something to magnus that perhaps there was a chance for him but in the end the position was drawn brilliant defensive play by magnus carlsen there saving himself and also helping his team win